We're talking about snow again. We're talking about snow because I'm preparing myself for the emotional turmoil that's gonna punch me in the face when the icy sky is covered with perpetual overcast in a mere few months, and me and my family have to forge for food in the icy tundra outside while I have to shovel driveways to pay for my student loans. Unlike lake effect snow, we're gonna be talking about man-made snow. Unintentional man-made snow. The date is January 19th, 2011, three days after the Jets murdered the Patriots in the AFC divisional round of the NFL playoffs. It was a pretty cold week for most of the Midwest, and New York was experiencing Snowmageddon, one of the snowiest winters on record. Close to an inch of snow also fell in Dodge City, Kansas, but only in a mile-wide path. It wasn't like it was caused by a stray passing snow shower either. The snow band that did exist was very localized, didn't really move at all over the course of three hours. So what caused this mysterious snow event? Well, if we take a look at the radar, we can see that the winds are blowing out of the southeast. The orientation of the snow band changed very slightly, but the eastern point was pretty fixed. The cause of the snow? A power plant downwind, and not one, but two meat processing facilities. The air around us is made up of water vapor. When it rises, it condenses, which means that water vapor, a gas, becomes a liquid. These minuscule droplets can then sort of coalesce as they continue to rise, reaching lower and lower temperatures. In fact, when water is left undisturbed, the droplets that rise high enough can be super cooled, meaning that they stay liquid well below freezing, which is actually the norm. In order for liquid water to turn into ice crystals, they need something to physically condense onto. These particles are called cloud condensation nuclei. You ever heard of cloud seeding? You probably have. It's when an aircraft flies into a cloud and releases these cloud condensation nuclei to help enhance rain in an area that may be experiencing a drought. When the droplet comes in contact with the cloud condensation nuclei, the droplet instantly freezes onto the particle and then forms a tiny ice crystal. These small ice crystals attract other tiny, small, supercooled water droplets. They freeze onto the crystal and then the crystal grows. As the singular ice crystal gets heavy, it starts to fall. It intertwines and locks with the other ice crystals and that creates clumps of snowflakes. So back to the electric beef situation. A very interesting weather pattern was actually happening on that day. The air was very cold and humid and there was a blanketing low hanging stratus. Any moisture that you physically add to an atmosphere like that is going to come down in the form of rain. In fact, any cloud condensation nuclei that you add to an atmosphere like that is also gonna come down in the form of rain or snow if it's cold enough, which it was. The meat and power plants did just that. They ejected tiny small particulate matter and a lot of moisture into the lower atmosphere, which we call the boundary layer and that caused a condensation extravaganza for about three hours until the atmosphere lost a lot of its moisture. Is this the only time in recorded history that a weather event like this has occurred? Yeah. I'm kidding, it happens literally all the time. On November 27, 2018 at 5 a.m., a small but persistent snow band formed over Jonesville, Kentucky before getting lost in the sauce, the sauce being a bunch of moisture aloft from a larger parent system. The cause? The Kentucky Utilities Ghent Generating Station, a power plant along the Ohio River. The same thing actually happened in January of that year in Boone County, the cause being the Miami Fort power plant in the southwestern tip of Ohio. Don't like 2018? Me neither. Try January 28th, 2021, when the Alliant Energy Power Plant caused a 100-mile lawn snow band that dropped an inch and a half in Columbus, Wisconsin. The list goes on and on. But Steve, why doesn't the steam just keep rising and get mixed into the atmosphere? Why does it stay and condense at such a low level? The answer is a temperature inversion. Typically, temperature decreases with height, but at the lowest level of the atmosphere, what we call the boundary layer, Sometimes temperature increases with height for a few thousand feet. In this so-called inversion, air will only rise if it's warmer than the surrounding air or if it's forced upwards. The steam produced by the power plant gets forced upwards, but it rapidly cools down to the point where the air above it becomes warmer. This acts like a physical cap, keeping the moisture lower to the ground and allowing it to produce snow 
relatively quickly. So is power plant snow dangerous? No. If a nuclear power plant exploded in the middle of winter or an if atomic bomb went off and radioactive steam then condensed into snow and then that fell down, you'd have a major issue. But steam released from power plants coming down as snow is generally harmless. It's not like more steam gets released in the winter either. It just takes on a different final physical form. Please destroy the like button, subscribe for more Weatherbox Wednesdays, and let me know in the comments what exactly you want me to talk about. You got a weather question? I'm your guy. Let me know. See you next week.